Hello learners, welcome to the screencast of Helium Neon Laser Construction Working. The screencast is for BTEC first year students who are studying engineering physics as a subject. This would also be useful for students of BSc. Now to start with, there is a temporary requisite uh, which are the following. Uh, the student should know something about characteristics of laser light, principle of laser action, essential components of laser and if uh, the learners are not actually acquainted with any of them then let's begin with uh, the nitty gritty of these things. First I shall start with stimulated emission. We all know that an atom would be found in a ground level state or the ground state now with the interaction of any photon or incident photon it would absorb this particular energy and reaches to an excited state so in this diagram we have energy e1 which is the energy of ground state or ground level energy and there is an energy which is e2 which is excited level energy and with the absorption of this photon let's say h new photon the elect the atom would move from energy level e1 to energy level e2 other thing is this when the atom is already in its excited state and if it interacts with an incident photon then this kind of interaction may result into emission of another photon which would be equivalent to the energy difference between ground level and excited level energy and then as the resultant of this we would be having two photons so what has happened in here is the atom which was already in excited state has interacted with the photon and then the result is this there were two photon and the atom was in its ground state now and the energy of these two photon would be equivalent now what has happened here is this at the end of this process we are going to have two photons which would be coherent and <coughs> they would be having identical phases and they would be traveling in the same direction now if this process is being repeated we would be having many photons and the coherence is, is something which would be maintained now move further let's start with population inversion thing uh, population inversion is a phenomena which is uh, not natural i would say in nature we all know that the distribution of items if we give certain energy to uh, a collection of items then the distribution is defined in terms of Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. It says that the probability of occupation of an energy level, let's say an excited energy level would be proportional to the exponential of minus of energy divided by Kb times T where Kb is Boltzmann constant, T is the absolute temperature and E1 is the energy of that particular energy level. So let's say in this case I have a diagram which <coughs> in which Yx is denotes the energy and we would have energy level E1 and E2 where energy E1 is lesser than that of energy E2. Now what would happen if I, if at a constant temperature the energy is high then the probability would be small. So that means to say that at ground state energy level I would have many atoms as compared to the higher energy level. While in case of population inversion it is mediated by a certain external source or agency because of which the population of atoms in higher energy is more than that of the lower energy and this is a phenomenon which is known as population inversion. Further there is another thing which is known as metastable states. Now uh, as we were discussing earlier that an atom if it interacts with the photon goes to uh, an excited state and in that particular excited state it basically rests till a lifetime of 10 to the power minus 7 seconds. It's order of 10 to the power minus 7 seconds. And then it has to bounce back to its previous state. Now the thing is this, there could be some other states which would not be stable, but that would be metastable. Metastable means that the lifetime of that atom in that particular state would be very large. As we have shown here, that the lifetime in this metastable state is 10 to the power minus 3 seconds as compared to the lifetime in the excited state that was 10 to the power minus 7 seconds. And I should mention here that if we want to have the population inversion phenomena, then we have to increase these kind of metastable state because in that particular position, we would be having many atoms in higher energy state which would be there for a longer duration. And these are basically required for laser action. Going further, let's start with components of laser. These are basically, we are going through the prerequisite part of this particular screencast. The components of laser, like uh, we have shown here, this is a highly reflecting mirror. This is again partially reflecting mirror and that is basically making housing. 
This housing between these two mirror is known as resonating cavity and an active material is kept in between them and there is would be a pumping source. Pumping source is basically uh, the provider of radiation which basically make this active material to go in a state which is known as population inversion and because of that particular state stimulated emission would jump in and due to this stimulated emission there would be generation of photons which are of same phase which are basically coherent and going the same direction so what would happen if we make these photons go through the active material again and again because of implying of these two mirrors we can have large number of stimulated photons so therefore this is something which is required therefore we call this thing as a resonating cavity because an oscillation is being set up of these photons they would be going back and forth in the active material so that there would be more number of stimulated emissions going further uh, now we shall start with the actual uh, discussion of the screen gas that is helium neon laser in this laser the active material is helium neon gas and the pumping mechanism is electric discharge and the resonating cavity is basically the housing so you can see here there that uh, a tube is being displayed uh, there is another tube these are basically helium neon laser you would see in the course of this screencast so basically this is construction of helium neon laser you can see there would be a glass tube and then there is a nod there is cathode and it is connected with RF power supply and then there is certain gas which is filled inside this is a reflecting mirror this is again a reflecting mirror and these two are making resonating cavity so in this case here it is active material is helium and neon gases in the ratio tends to 1 I must mention here that the ratio is something which changes frequently it depends on the output power desired from this particular helium neon laser so it is basically the construction is specific there would be certain reports in which, in which it is given as 7 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 as well the diameter tube would also change generally the diameter is kept as 1 centimeter to obtain a beam diameter of 1 millimeter the length of this tube could be 15 to 50 centimeter in certain cases it is up to 80 centimeter long as well the pressure inside the tube is kept as one millimeter of mercury and the pumping mechanism is electric discharge this is basically a discharge tube basically a gas discharge tube is usually a glass tube which with electrodes sealed through its wall when a voltage is applied to two electrodes and the pressure is reduced eventually pressure is reached at which current flows and the gas begin to glow at this particular juncture in this glass this uh, tube would be glowing and then there would be many electrons inside this particular tube and which would be making the conduction possible moving further so when there would be certain electron and the gas and the tube is glowing then these atoms helium and neon would have would be in their excited state if we consider the helium and neon atom then from atomic aspect then they, they would look something like this the helium is in its 1s2 state and the neon is in 1s2 2s2 2p6 state and then these are basically the excited states of helium and neon atoms you can see this is 1 2 2 excited states of helium and let's say 1 2 3 excited states of uh, neon now from BTEC students perspective this is something which is not quite important this is just to show that there are certain excited state which could be accessed by these two items now what happens there is basically the high energetic electron would interact with helium and they would pass the energy to it and the helium would reach into high energy state now look at here the f1 is ground state and f3 and f5 are excited state which can be reached by the absorption of these particular energy from electrons and at the same time organ can also absorb this particular energy now what is happening here is this now we would be having certain electron in excited state so step one is excitation of helium atom by the absorption of energy from energetic electrons step two would be the interaction between helium and neon as we have already mentioned that the helium is large in quantity and neon is less therefore there would be lesser probability of neon getting excited from electron and it would be possible since these f3 and f4 labels are metastable energy states so therefore there 
back transition or the transition back to ground state is not possible not probable but these atoms these helium atom can transfer their energy by collision to neon atom very easily so basically what happens is this these helium atom which are energetic now would interact with neon by with a by collision and then neon atom would reaches to its higher energy states like e3 and e5 shown in this screencast so what happens now is this when helium has transferred its energy to neon it it bounces back to its ground state and neon atoms get quite excited so step 2 is completed that is excitation of argon atom due to collision with helium atoms further now what happens this neon atom since e5 and e4 are metastable energy states then these uh, argon atom would make a transition to lower energy state and with this transition they would emit certain photons fine so this is step 3 which is the excitation of argon atom by emission of radiation so if it, this radiation is under visible spectra then we would be getting a visible laser because these are basically stimulated emission which is taking place and these photon would be coherent in nature if i congregate all these things sum up all the things then the energy level diagram would look something like this in y axis there is an energy electron volt and on x axis the ground state is being shown this ground state is for both of the atom helium atom and neon atom because both of the atoms are kept at the same temperature so what happens is this with the excitation of electron the helium atom from its ground state energy reaches to an energy 19.1778 electron volt and 20.61 electron volt these are basically the energy level of helium atom as we have shown earlier as well these two energy level are being populated by helium atom now because they are being excited by electron impact and these helium atom can now collide with neon atom and increase their energy or i would say that the neon atom would get excited to energy level 4s and 5s you can see here that the energy level are quite near to the values like 19.7 is exactly matching while the 2 1s 0 and 5s are slightly matching these are the notation which are known as spectroscopic notation these are the out of scope of btech first year so therefore i would not discuss much about this you can just consider these being labels only so these two are metastable states now the helium atom is colliding with neon atom and the energy is being transferred from this to this now once the neon atom is excited now the transition can be possible from 5s to 4p 5s to 3p 4s to 3p these are three de excitation which are possible now if the neon atom migrates from 5s to 4p energy state then there would be emission of 33912 angstrom uh, photon and this basically this wavelength uh, falls in higher region therefore this would not be visible there would another be there would another transition which would be from 5s to 3p which would originate a 6328 angstrom wavelength and that would be a visible wavelength wavelength which would be uh, orange red in color and that would be visible this transition is happening from a metastable state to an energy state therefore these photons would be uh, basically uh, coherent and therefore they could produce laser there is another transition which is possible which is from 4s to 3p which would originate uh, a photon of wavelength 11523 which is again an ir wavelength therefore this would not be visible so we are getting a, a photon of 6328 angstrom which is in visible range now we, if you look further the transition from 3p to 3s is also possible this is basically uh, this is basically not a meta stable state this is a regular state so there would be rapid transition and this would be a spontaneous emission and this would be a non coherent emission so therefore the photon which has been emitted by uh, with this particular wavelength would not be coherent and therefore laser action cannot be obtained with this particular wavelength now from 3s to ground state can be achieved by the neon atom being collided with the walls of discharge tube and these are basically radiative transition therefore no radiation would result out of it so what is happening here we are getting two ir wavelengths and a visible wavelength and these three are basically uh, coherent photons and therefore we would have a laser action with these three wavelengths now if we sum up all these things then uh, this device is resulting in 
emission of uh, orange red light and that is pretty much coherent spot size would be quite small because uh, the diameter of the tube is quite small and these photons are moving in certain direction and the resonating cavity is also provided so therefore there would be large amount of photon should be coming out and that would be a constant laser now if we uh, sum up this thing and uh, study the characteristics of helium lane laser then we can say that this is basically a uh, source of visible light there that would fall in the red portion of spectrum with the wavelength 632 at angstrom and then there would be two ir wavelengths 11520 and 33910 uh, angstrom uh, with this there is another thing which is characteristics of this laser it is basically uh, a device which uh, takes very low power or it's basically the output of this is very low uh, it is generally lesser than 10 millivolt and 10 milliwatt i'm sorry and the power of this goes up to 50 milliwatt the power is not very high as considered uh, to commercially available lasers right nowadays and the lifespan of this laser is uh, somewhere around 20000 hours the advantage and disadvantage associated with this laser is first i should take the advantages it is basically uh, it exhibit good coherence property and it is basically a visible laser the dimension is quite smaller and it is very lower cost one it, the construction of this laser is quite easy and since the output is quite low therefore it is less harmful as compared to other laser which are working at higher power and the negativity or the disadvantages are this is basically a low power device uh, so we would be getting very small power and the gain would also be low and since uh, there are two ir wavelength uh, in addition to a visible wavelength therefore these wavelength has to be suppressed have to be suppressed if you want to make use it as monochromatic light source so therefore the cost would be added up if we are using it as a monochromatic light source now the thing is is there is another requirement of high voltage as compared to solid state laser solid state laser is basically competent of many lasers it basically operates at very low power therefore the requirement of high voltage is something which is considered as disadvantage for helium neon laser and there is one more thing the helium on neon laser can be leaked out of the plasma tube so that is again a disadvantage for this particular laser the application of laser helium neon laser is experimentation in experimentation related to interference and diffraction in academic institutions and it was being used in reading qr code and barcode but now it was uh, the solid state laser has replaced it and this can also be used as alignment tool so in the end uh, this is the end of this screencast i hope you would have enjoyed it and thanks for watching thank you